at it. Okay, it is now 737 and the meeting has been voted open. Um, and looking at the agenda, uh, with Sarah, unfortunately, oh, wait, we didn't open it when we were recording, so you should open it. Okay, okay, motion to open the meeting. Uh, I make a motion. And someone to second? Marlene seconds. Thank you. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, the meeting has been opened at 737. Unfo oh, you know, if I download this, I'm going to download it, and then I think I'll be able to make it a lot bigger and easier to view. Oh, good. That would be okay. Because, all right, here we go. I'm not sure what you guys are seeing. Blank. <laughs> blank, really? While you're do yeah, blank. While you're doing this, I'm okay. going to explain that first on the agenda was to welcome a prospective new committee mem member, Sarah Magnano. Um, she just texted me though that she can't come tonight since she's not actually, hasn't actually gone before the board of trustees yet. It would have been a visit, so hmm. I hope Can you guys, can. can you see yeah, now? There. And it is bigger. Yes, now. yes. Great. Um, okay, next on the agenda, um, approval of the minutes which were sent out, Ellen sent out and then they were also included as attachment one, Gail and I have both looked at them. Are there any further corrections to them? There might have been, I don't know, there might have been a few little things that I noticed, nothing of huge consequence. Um, Why don't we just approve it then? Because you did yeah. go over it. We both went over it. So someone moved to approve the minutes, please. Can, can, I move you, to just, you, just, can you give me one moment, like half a minute to just go over it? Because it was something that popped out. Well, it's not on what you're looking at right now. Oh, it's the attachment. And the attachment is not here with the agenda. Well, it, it's separate. Yeah, I guess. Ah, OK. Well, all right. I, I guess it's fine. OK. So would you like to move to approve? Um, Marlene moved, right, Marlene? Yes. Yep. Oh, sorry, Marlene. I didn't hear that. Yes. Second. Gail, you want to second? Um, sure, I'll second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 There's okay. a at one. Meetings have been approved. Um, so I know you sent the draft to Robert and Sally, Ellen, but would you send it to them again, take off? I don't remember whether it says attachment one at the top or not, but just tell them, you can tell them there were no changes, but that these yeah. are documents. Okay. Okay. I just tried to open attachment one and I, it's very confusing what's there. Uh, was it something from Kathy Savalt and then something? No, that's I, four, that's attachment four. I don't know what I'm looking at. This is very bizarre. I, I can't really open the attachments, sorry. Okay, okay. well, we'll just talk about them. Um, okay. But um, yeah, most of them are labeled at the top, unless it's a photograph, so. Um, yeah, something really weird, I don't okay. know. Okay, comments from Sorry. residents, Nora, are there any residents here? No, we have no attendees. No attendees, okay. Um, let's keep going. We have only one correspondence to go over this time. It's really nice when you have meetings every couple of weeks and you're trying to draw up an agenda. There's not nearly as much stuff. But we have one correspondence from the resident at 130 Beach with two questions, one of which has to do again with why we have not posted the ANSI standards online. The other has to do with posting the new tree law on the village website. So uh, I, I can answer both of those. The ANSI standards have not been posted because they're copyrighted and we don't have permission. Um, and I don't. I don't know whether they don't grant it, but there are printed copies available in Village Hall. I don't know whether they got one for the library or not, Gail. That was a good suggestion. Bev, may I also just point out um, the person who wrote this, you know, who's, who requested that we post the standards mm -hmm. noted that a community, I think was it in South Carolina, has posted them, which well, they does not have permission. Oh, but that oh right. It, it doesn't mean that they have permission to do it, number one. 
Yeah. And we have been told that it's copyrighted and we may not. So that's, yeah. I just want to put that on record there. Thank you. Okay. That's true. Th those are both good points. Yeah. Um, the other question was actually a very good one because I went on the village website to see if the new tree law was there and it was not, at least not when I looked up section 318, which is the tree law, it was the old one. So I asked, I don't even remember who I asked. I don't know whether it was you, Nora, or Sally, somebody why it wasn't there and was told that it's currently posted. Oh, Nora explained that it doesn't get posted until the, the code book, which is apparently some, what? It's like you are looking at the actual code and the code yes. has been modified. Yes. The, the new law is posted under, under new laws on that section of the website, but it's not in the actual code because that gets updated twice a year. Okay, I did not know that and I'm sure that no one else looking for it will know it. So I asked her if there was a way we could refer people or um, to the to the section new laws or actually earlier we we're talking about continuing to e-blast out the fact that there is a new law and perhaps there we could we should also mention that it's posted under new laws at the moment until it moves until the code book is returned anyway that was a good question I thought I had no idea I have to interrupt for one moment. I, I found an email from uh, Sally Roberts saying that when we have uh, physical meetings and somebody is calling in, they have to be seen. Does that also pertain to when we have a virtual meeting, Nora? So there's a different rule. Um, so when we have a, vir well, first of all, virtual meetings are only allowed um, by this executive order. Yeah. So right. And, so, and it was just approved by the uh, email. That was email. It was just extended. <coughs> what, right. what the process is, is that currently now we can have virtual meetings. We can meet virtually. The meetings have to be recorded and the public has to be able to watch <laughs> or listen to the meetings in real time. So listening is fine. Uh, so wait, wait, people do me. not have let to. Me, oh, she's not finished, Gail. <laughs> so, Sorry. Um, so technically, Right now, because you could also do these meetings via a call, the participants don't have to be seen. So um, they can be like the Marlene's got her screen dark. That's okay. Right. Normally, okay. when we are not allowed to meet virtually, if you want to teleconference in, you must teleconference in, which means it has to be properly noticed. You have to appear on a screen. And in the notice requirement, your location has to be mentioned. So the public has to be able to come to the location from where the member is calling in. Oh, wow. So if I am calling in from my home yes, to a physical in-person meeting, then people, people technically <laughs> have to be allowed to come to my home. And yeah. you can't call in, you have to come in on right. Right. right, video but, conference in, but, exactly right, but, okay. Um, so I have to say that I'm not sure how that's gonna, you know, that, that happens sometimes at board of trustees meetings where a member will be out of town and they, they appear on the screen. We don't really have the technology um, for the public to, to appear that way or for guests to appear that way. Okay. So it's not a Zoom meeting now. And, you know, I don't know whether there's, there's, there's talk about the open meetings law changing because we've, you know, basically people have been meeting for nearly two years virtually and there is some benefit to it. So there may be some changes down the line, but I think we have to assume that when we go back to meeting in person, if, an, if a member can't come, they have to teleconference in and say, state where their location is. Okay. What's the notice period, Nora? Uh, you have, it's, well, at least 72 hours, no less than 72 hours. Okay, that's good to know. Yeah. Thank you so for clarifying it. A really fashionable watering hole. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone will come. <laughs> um, okay, okay. Uh, let's go on to the old business. Um, two things we'll be following or just following up that came up at the prior meeting. 
One was we had a question about 1523 Henry where they took out a lot of trees um, and we wanted to know what enforcement action had happened. Uh, it appears that all the trees were under eight inches, so none of them violated, you know, fell into the protected tree category of the tree law. Um, and so that would not be an enforcement issue. I think I recall from an earlier meeting that they did get a violation for obstructing the sidewalk because they left all the debris there for a while. But this is just an example, you know, when we wrote the tree law, we knew that we were, you know, our personal preferences would have been not to let any trees be cut down at all. But we wanted to find a ground that would somehow balance between protecting large, mature, valuable trees and giving people some autonomy over, over their property. And we picked eight inches, so. These trees were smaller. Um, and then at 749 Bleecker, I think this was your question, Gail, you had seen trees marked to come down and you thought that they might benefit simply from being well pruned. Um, Jerry replied that he is had been already been planning to do an assessment of the trees, um, but he's been out, and so he's he, he but he's still planning to do that assessment and decide okay. where. Okay, and and Ellen, it's not West Day School. That's an abbreviation. It's Westchester Day School. Just FYI. Okay. Thanks. You're welcome. And the, the, and is the picture you're talking about that picture that Gail submitted? Um, there was, I don't have a picture with this one on, on this agenda. There may have been one on an earlier meeting. Okay. Okay. Never mind. Okay. Or maybe I'm confusing it with the Con Ed trees. Um, there's a special, there's some, special oh, yeah. yeah, we do have some Con Ed trees later. There's yep. some special concern about the trees on Bleecker because there were, there are several trees that are rotting, you know, these are street trees and they are workhorses and they get abused and they're not, you know, it's, but they are across the street from homes and one tree that was hollow fell, hit a power line across the street, people lost power and there was a fire. I believe the pole went on fire that was holding up the electricity and, you know, the utility lines. So, you know, always, 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 number one, you know, person and property, you know, we, we want people and their property to be safe. Right. So, yeah, and uh, Jerry is said he will do an assessment. Um, I, I don't know if he's doing it this, he's planning to do it. Oh, he'll do it this week, he said. So um, maybe we could touch base with him uh, early, maybe Tuesday next week and find out one of the trees is a not a nesting place but it's a place where an osprey at least one osprey eats and osprey are very special birds and uh i, I i'm not sure if they're a protected species they might be but there a lot of effort goes into helping them out and you know There's i've actually a lot of excitement because they've actually returned to this area in the last 10 maybe 15 years they were yeah or any for a long time. And you'll find beheaded fish below that tree that they have brought there. Oh, I love that. So this maybe. tree is not in great shape. It's very tall. It's missing a lot of limbs. It needs some serious pruning. Its days are numbered, but if we can- Possibly you know, keep it going for a number of years though. So. Yeah, maybe the, yeah. As long as we could keep it going, it'd be nice to keep it going, yeah. but Jerry will assess that, so. Okay. Do you want to check with him next week to find out whether he's done that? Sure, sure. I'll write that down right now. I will I will follow up with uh, Jerry Ellen next week. Thank you. Um, okay. Um, true law, there's not a lot to say. I last month we um, went over the changes, the revisions that um, the planning board had asked for, 
Um, there, were, there were a couple sort of corrections in the law, but primarily it was making it consistent with other parts of the code. Anyway, I sent that off after our meeting, and I think Nora said it's going to be coming up on a Board of Trustees agenda. It hasn't yet, but it will, it's, it's in the sort of camper. Um, Bev, if you could tell me what attachment we're up to, I would like to close oh, this. That was, that, was, that was not an attachment. That's an update. Oh, because because I don't see a whole lot of benefit to looking at the agenda as we're discussing it. I think it would be more beneficial if I could put up the attachments. Do you agree? Um, yeah, probably. Okay, I'm going to see if I can do that. So sorry. I'm reading down the agenda and that's probably enough. The attachments would be probably more helpful. We're up to yeah. three. We're about to do three. It might take and a little. I'll, I'll talk while you're. Oh, there you're getting very good at that. That's a later one. I'm, I'm working on it. <laughs> <laughs> which which one is this? You're looking at five. So can you five? Okay, and then I scroll here. Wrong line. Eight five. Other way, other way. 10, other way. 11. There was, nothing higher, there was nothing higher up, just the email. So they're they're showing out of order. Yeah. Oh, okay. We're up to three. three. We're up to three. Three. There we oh, go. Oh, that's right. The photographs go in first. You know, that's not what they are. Where they okay. Were. Okay. Um, I've got okay. it now. Can you guys see that? I, I can't make this yes. any larger. Yes. Really. It's actually Marlene and Dennis. I'm sorry he's not here, but Marlene, do you want to talk about the hotline idea? Yeah, I, I've been calling over to the building, building inspector's number every time I see um, a suspicious pruning going on where it looks Yay, like they're... Marlene. <laughs> yeah. What? Yay. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> anyway, um, so we're kind of on a first name basis now and um, he um, was kind of appalled that he didn't get word of this, this tree being taken down quickly enough, despite my efforts. And so we talked about having um, some kind of a hotline set up. He seemed to be in favor of the idea. He really is passionate about making sure that he gets there in time. Um, yeah, yeah, he's a true believer. So, yeah. <laughs> so that's really good. And um, he said, you know, he said, you can give everybody my cell phone number and they can call me, oh, which anyway. I thought was great. But I think we have to find a little more of an elegant solution than that, because he's yeah. going to get pretty burnt out quickly if that happens. Yeah. And, and what, who is he? What is his role? He is the deputy building inspector, I think. Yes. I yes. think Frank is the building inspector. I forgot his last name starts with a T. A and, uh, yeah. And okay. uh, he's the deputy one. Thank you. Sure. Um, so I don't, who do we ask about setting up a, a hotline? Does anyone know? I would think Jerry, no? He's a starting place, but he's really kind of overwhelmed at the moment. Nora, who do we ask? I mean, well, I think we should talk to Dennis and see, because it would be in his, it needs to be in his department, which is a different building from Jerry's main office. That's true. And then um, figure out, I mean, you know what's gonna i mean it's gonna be somebody who it's i mean we're not gonna have an employee that just sits there answering the phone for this purpose so there's just gonna have to be an employee who or or a number that rings that whoever answers it knows that they yeah or, or you know, maybe in the department they can forward you know they can forward there's always someone there now so they can forward it yeah, to, everybody, there's we're back to a, a a better schedule so yeah I would check with Dennis because he's the person that's going to be getting all the requests. Okay. All right. Why don't I go back to him and tell him that we're all in favor of the idea yeah. and we just want him to go ahead with it and whatever he needs from us, we'll, we'll offer to help him. But I think it's really in his court. Do yeah. we need to vote on this? Should we vote on it or not necessary? Yeah. Okay. Never hurts. Well, I, I, I uh, make a motion to that to let Dennis know that we think this is a great idea and to go ahead with a hotline. Seconded. Thank you. Favor? Oh. Aye. Four. Yep. Aye. Um, okay. Thank you. Great. All right. I'm just making a Attachment note. Attachment four? 
I, yeah, hang on just a second. I sure. I see now if I download these ahead of time, then I could share them um, in a larger format. So I'll do that oh, for the next okay. meeting. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Okay. The next one is uh, a, just an interesting follow on from the planning board that I thought you all would like to see. It's an update on the 1010 Orienta Avenue situation. And I'll try to summarize what. Kathy Saval says, it took me a while to kind of get it straight in my head. But the I, I, we talked about last month, in fact, Gail went to the meeting, the landscape plan that was put in by the new owners, uh, the planning board rejected because it was just all small ornamental trees and they'd taken out very mature large ones. Um, and then they apparently came back to the next meeting with some a supplemental information that didn't address, did not address the planning board concerns. Um, shortly after that, the village determined that they had in fact, at, at the time of the clear cutting, it had violated the zoning code that's actually on the book saying that a site plan needs to be submitted for anything with 25% or more clearance, which we were all talking about last summer, and they didn't do that. And therefore they, uh, the planning board determined that the application was going to be evaluated on its condition before the clear cutting took place. And this is the great part for us, that the tree law, which had passed in the interim, governs how they have to handle it. So they're now required, they're under our replanting requirement. So I, I'm just really happy about it because this is a really great example of how we managed to create a tool. It's not just protecting individual properties, but it's letting other parts of the village like the planning board or the building department actually you know refer to this law and they, they it gives them some some teeth that they can actually work with and it's still new um i think it's going to be a while before this sort of flows normally but you know naturally but i i'm really really optimistic about the fact that it's being put to use and didn't save those trees but at least they're going to be replanted that's great yeah, yeah, we should all be happy. Um, the next one I'm gonna give you a quick, this is not an attachment, I'm giving you a quick status report. Um, I, I, you may remember that I've been talking to a Rynek High School action, student action research group meets after school, they're juniors and seniors. And they are interested for their current project in creating a survey of village residents to sort of see how they feel about trees and also try and see what, what they either like or don't like and, and what makes them feel good or not feel good about trees. And with this survey, we're hoping to create some data that will be turned over. It's going to go out through the village. It'll be reviewed by um, village staff. And then when it comes back, we'll analyze the data. And we will, I hope, be able to use it to create some, you know, educational programs that may actually cause residents who are not currently in favor of, I won't say the tree law, they may not know about the tree law, but just having trees around. And it may help make them feel good about it, you know, having the trees. That's the goal. Maybe residents who just take trees for granted. They don't think about. Well, that's, yeah, that's a very big group. And in fact, that's one reason why I think these tree walks are so great. I was talking to somebody about it and he said, you know, instead, you know, he said most people just kind of walk down the street and it's tree, 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 tree. But the tree walks are, you know, this is, this is an ash and this is, on its way out probably you know, and this is a red oak and this is a white oak it's really interesting so yes I think educating people and making them 
appreciate them is is the goal here and mm. and to recognize the benefits that that flow to them Beverly, I, did they give you an idea when they'll be sending out the emails um no they sent me over the weekend i didn't actually couldn't open the file till monday a, a first draft of the survey and i sent back some suggestions so it's being okay. drafted right now okay thanks um, um i I received, sorry. I was going to say they wanted to go through it with me a few times before they sent it to Jerry to look over. Um, something, I received some correspondence, uh, a uh, text message from Wendy Zolan, 1037 Orienta Avenue submitted an application to remove some trees. So that should just go under correspondence. Yeah, okay. That's 1037, Ellen. 1037 Orienta Avenue, application to remove some trees. Thank you. She's really on this now, isn't she? Yeah, she is. She couldn't, uh, she wanted to uh, attend as a, not as a panelist, just like to view, to listen, yeah. but is not able to, so. Okay, okay. Um, the next, uh, there's some enforcement action um, of the attachment five. This is it. Oh, okay. I, I, I didn't get to look at it, Marlene. I told you I was going to. It's a tree that's been topped. And yep. you think that, you don't think it is a Con Ed topping. You think that it was done by the homeowner? Well, that's just my guess because yeah, it really well, wasn't, of, there were no wires near it. Okay, then no, even Con Ed doesn't go around and just top our trees. Right. Yeah. So right. I, I forgot, I don't recognize that house. I'll have to go look at it. If it's been done recently, I think we can do something about it. If it turns out they did it, you know, a long time ago, I don't know whether whether they, they can be, you know, it's too old to get an, I'll, I'll, I'll send that to Jerry. What's the okay. address? Hmm? 990 the parkway the parkway okay i know where it should be i just don't recognize it um then another one is this from you also marlene attachment six yeah this is the monstrosity this is this is the right con ed just totally destroyed this poor tree yeah on village property is yep. that do we know the address of that? I don't know. That is the community Family council. Avenue. Stanley yeah. Avenue. Avenue. Um, I can check the number. What avenue? Stanley. Stanley, oh, Stanley. Stanley Avenue. It's uh, just up the road from Mount Pleasant. Okay, yeah, I know where Stanley is. We, we walked up and down that in 98 degree 234. heat. 234, thank you. What is it? 234. 234 yeah. Stanley Avenue. Thanks. You, you're welcome. 234. Yeah, this is, I, I really want to build a file of these pictures of trees that kind of is really killed because that's, I, surely that's not okay. <laughs> and this is in a flood zone. There was eight feet of water in that spot. I want you to know. Yeah. And that tree was an older tree that could have sucked up in one day about 200 gallons of water yep. through the roots and transpired that water into the air. We need more mm. of these. We don't need to be cutting them down. It's just so sad and that that was done. Yeah. <clears throat> that if you collect these pictures, that at some point you may do a presentation at a board of trustees meeting. Oh, that's a good idea. There was one um, a few months ago we had in which they took out an entire tree um, by a filling station, service station on Marinick Avenue. I'm going to go back and find that. Um, you know, it, it, it was a big tree. <laughs> so we'll work on it. I know I'm writing this down, kind of file. Um, and then attachment seven. I don't remember any. Oh, is that seven? Um, let's see. 
Oh, yeah, no, it's not. That's a, one of the printed ones. It is okay. a copy of the, don't, there, uh, seven, seven, there we go. I got it. Just, this is an update. This is a, for our information, copy of violation that was issued to 510 Cortland Avenue. Um, I think that was one we asked about last time. Two large pine trees, 80 yeah. feet tall, more than 12 inches round. Actually, I'm not sure we brought it up at the last meeting, Marlene, that might be another one of yours. At any rate, it got reported and a violation was issued. So again- Oh yes, 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 I do remember that. Uh-huh, good. Yeah. yeah, you've been very busy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always walking, that's why. No, thank you, thank you, because this is the only way they're gonna know about it is, is yeah. it's reported. Okay, so the violation went out, the tree law is working. Is attachment eight an image? Um, let me see, we don't have any images for a little while. Okay, um, I see an eight. It is, it's, it's an image. Oh, it, it, attachment yeah. eight, we saw, that was the, the Con Ed brutalized tree, okay. No, that was not eight, that was. Oh, it's numbered eight. Should have been six. Anyway, um, yeah. I, you know, I don't always do a perfect job. <laughs> okay, I don't see an eight. Okay. All right. Um, anyway, before we get to the missing eight, on the new trees, uh, if you will recall, we, we peeled 36 trees off the fall planting list. Um, to come in under the budget, within the budget. And we hoped to plant them last fall instead because they wouldn't give us a guarantee that late. Um, they're going to be planted this spring and I'm meeting with Jeff on Monday to look at some of the sites because he had some questions about whether they would work. So that's just an FYI. I, I'll ask him when they're actually going to put the trees in because these are trees that have been on the list for over a year now. Um, I keep showing up and painting the sidewalk and nothing happens. Um, I'm persistent. I am persistent. <laughs> a dog with a bone. Um, another, just FYI, the Board of Trustees scholarship idea, which we talked about last month, um, to put you know, to give trees to residents in areas like Washingtonville and probably other underserved areas, under tree areas, uh, was referred to the New York State Attorney General for an opinion as to whether or not it could actually be done. Um, and, and today I was talking to a resident of Washington Street who is interested. They, oh, wonderful. They lost a big tree. Um, and they a big old tree, and they'd be interested in having and doing that. They don't have their and they're in a place where there isn't room to do it on the street side, and they'd be interested in having it. So. Oh, that's just great. Yes. Keep talking. Yep. <laughs> yep. Um, that's so exciting. I'm really happy. Yeah. No, it's it's nice. Yeah. Um, update on the tree inventory. If you remember, we had some high school students working on it last summer and fall. I, I think they're not doing it anymore. The status now is that Jerry has a Mamaroneck High School student lined up to start in March, which will be good. But it's That's great. It's great. It's just a huge job. It's just we got to keep keep it going it's a lot for one person it would be nice if we had a group you know they could also it's sort of a lonely job yeah well it's a it's also a pandemic <laughs> it's yeah. a good outdoor activity well it's outdoors you know well maybe yeah. whoever's doing it will bring friends along i don't that's I don't, true maybe they'll you know, when i worked on the inventory uh i i had a partner um it's quite a few years ago and actually i was really lucky because i had the New York State Forester for my partner who's assigned to our area. So I learned a lot in that week. George, George Profus? I had George Profus. Wow. So wow. I got to him. But, I just um, spoke with him the other day, or actually emailed. I had a, no, telephone message exchange. Yeah, yeah good. With him the other day, yeah. He knows a lot. He does, he's great. Yeah. 
Um, anyway, you're right. It's a huge job. I, it's just going to be an ongoing thing, I think, until you know maybe sometime we can actually pay people to do it. But as you may remember, that fell out of the budget when <laughs> the economy tanked. You know, we tried to get a bunch of volunteers to do it a while ago, and maybe it's worth retrying because people are out. It seems to me people are outside and want to be outside a lot more now during COVID. Mm -hmm. Maybe that would maybe maybe if we sent an email to people who have attended the tree walks okay. and tell them we need your help to do a tree inventory. Now, you know, you know how important the trees are and what beautiful trees we have. Can you please, please help us mm -hmm. do a tree inventory? Because we have this group now that love trees that have been- They show up over and over. Yeah. And now they could actually do something so important. Maybe, you know, maybe um, Robert could help us craft an email and send it out. Uh, I think the real key would be to get the email addresses of the people from the meetings. From the well, Robert, couldn't Robert do that? I hate to pile things onto Robert. He's really got a full plate and he only works part time. Well, he. I think I, if we know, gave him, if we he gave knows who could do that, he knows. You know, could you write up something, Beth, and then Robert, if you send it to Robert, Robert knows who has the. Uh, list of who registered because I remember he did send something out to them before. Via this, okay, I think email. I have the list too. I think I saved them. Okay, draft email. Why not? I mean, let's build on it. That's sort of the whole point. You know, the trees belong to all of us, and we all need to take care of them. I think you ought to write it. You've got the. You've got all the work. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe when you have your next tree walk, you just give out a flyer. Uh, that's a good idea. I think maybe both. Uh, you know, you can't yeah, ask. Right. In, in addition, you know, see if yeah. sure tree walk are interested. In sure. That's idea. That's a good idea. You can help. Mm -hmm. You can help. Okay. Yeah. Those are good ideas. And then speaking of that, the spring tree walk. Well, just one more thing. The oh. other thing you could do is, you know. Robert puts together a newsletter every Friday. Ah. So you could put an appeal in there. Yeah. I mean, you know, provided, you know, provided Jerry doesn't have to train all these people. I mean, I don't want to put well, that's the thing. They do have to be trained. Right. So, so we have to check, run this by Jerry first. If we had a meeting, yes. maybe, you know, could he train people at a meeting? Yes. Let's run it by Jerry. Yes, because he's the person that, that's, you know. That's the first step. Yep. Well, I mean, if we know, had if know. we had even a third of the number of people that attended, I think we could actually complete a tree inventory. I, I can tell you that it's gonna take, when we did it 10 years ago, we had about 30 volunteers. Oh, really? We worked for a week on a, just a limited number of the main streets in the village, and we didn't get through them all. I wonder if we could attach it, like part one would be the tree, tree walk, part two could be like an inventory or inventory training. Well, I don't know. That's after we talk to Jerry. But I, yeah. I mean, I, I just don't want you to think that this is an easy job because it's right. not. I know, but so it, yeah, that one person can't do it all either. No, no. Okay. I mean, it's a struggle. Obviously, if we don't have one person at a time doing it, it'll never happen. Mm -hmm. If we get more people, it would be better. But even if we had right. a huge team, we were, I mean, it was, it, I did it all day. It wasn't, you know, like an after school block, it was nine to five. You were committed for a week, yeah. And um, and there were a lot of teams out, and we covered a small number of the village streets. There's some, you know, something I learned from the Yale uh, Urban Forestry Management course. There's a a technology called LIDAR. It's uh, is it small L capital or no, probably large capital L small I cap D A R. 
and um, they use LIDAR to do tree inventories. They don't do species, but it will um, identify trees by canopy and also how tall they are. Um, it works on some kind of sonar system, I believe, and that's how it identifies how tall. It's, light, like it's, it's used by the Department of Defense for yeah. those kind of applications, the military. Yeah, it was, it was used by some Israeli uh, inventors who invented a fish operated vehicle. So these fish can travel over land in their, they drive this vehicle. But anyway, that's another story. Um, the point is that it wouldn't give us all the information. We wouldn't have species, but at least we would know, really, you would know about every single tree and how tall they are. And that's mm -hmm. useful information. Um, just a minute, Sarah, can you, um, Sarah, Sarah could actually join us, but she doesn't have the link to get in and I can't find okay. it. What she needs to do is go to the website. Okay, wait, let me. Oh, let me she's not it. hearing me, right? No, she's, she's not in. Just, I will say, go, but I'm not that fast a typer. Go to VOM. Website and the calendar and she can get in from the calendar. There's the public access and then I can promote her. Okay. Calendar. Wait, she goes to the calendar and there's a link for public access? Yeah, yeah. the VOM calendar. Never been there. Access. Um, Nora, I don't know if she knows who Nora is, will. I'm going to stop the share right now. We don't need to be looking at all that. I'll go back to okay. it. Okay, so she may come in. I guess she got everyone in bed. Good. Can I uh, uh, mention something about the tree inventory that you were thinking about? Yeah. Is it possible um, that we can create some sort of community event for families during the summertime to maybe have some sort of a challenge to assign like certain areas to a family, like a block each and, you know, get your tree inventory in by this date. I love also, that. Yeah, I like that too. Because then maybe it's, it'll be like a family event so they could do it together with the kids. Absolutely, I love that. That's, I don't think that's instead of, I think these are all like, you know, additional ideas and ways to get it, you know, to start chipping away at it. And you can also, you know, that might be something to talk with Jason about. Because right. they organize, it, it, you know, they have- Oh, right, list. right, the parks. Or, list. You know, yeah. there, were, there were tons of people who decorated Christmas ornaments. Really? You know, holiday ornaments for the tree. You know, people came up and picked up their kits. There's a lot, so th they have a very big mailing list. So oh. families who are used to doing village activities would be the target audience, you know. Bev, is there value in doing part of the tree inventory, just like where there is a tree and bring a tape measure and measure it? Is there any, you know, to just get that done? And deciduous or, you know, coniferous, I mean. Yeah, I mean, you can, it, it's, it's, it's uh, I remember when we were doing, some of the information was pretty sketchy, particularly as it got later in the fall, all the leaves came down. Um, you know, you can, the things we were doing is, I think, the location, you know, the GPS location. Um, maybe the height, we weren't actually, I don't think we were actually measuring them, but I think there was an assessment of whether it was large or small condition. I think those were the three key things, you know, if it looked healthy, if it looked like it needed pruning or if it was diseased. Mm -hmm. um, and then beyond that, you could put in species, but when the leaves fell off, I and it fell apart. Right. I mean, a lot of people don't know the species. And yeah, but that, yeah, that's just to not, know where we have trees and if they're big yes, or small definitely. would be definitely. tremendous. And if they look like they're in good shape or pretty good and shape. And with, with, you know, with these new apps, they could use the tree apps to identify them, right? Yeah. Good. That's true. If it has leaves and all. Yeah. Yeah. That's very true. Good point, Ellen. Anyway, that's a good idea. Thanks. Has Sarah shown up? No. Okay, well, she may. 
Um, okay, so, they, so the first step though is that I'll find out if Jerry can actually has interest or time in doing some sort of training before we move on. And if we had volunteers, what would they upload to? Well, and would they have access to, um, you know? Well, I'll find out how he wants it done. If he, yeah, you know, okay. You know, we'll find out how he, you know, he, right. he knows he's got a program going. It's just. Okay. The, um, the other thing I would say is if you want to start having a much bigger, like a more robust program to do this, then maybe somebody from the tree committee is going to have to be able to be, do the training. Mm -hmm. Probably you know, doable. We know pretty much about trees now. Right. But I mean, I think it may be, you know, it's not realistic to assume that Jerry is going to have time to train. It's you true. Know, yeah. Right. I mean, we should get trained. Yeah, you should be able to do the training. I mean, I, you know, I, I know he likes doing it and I, I'm not, I don't want to take that away from him because it's nice to do, you know. It's nice to do things home. you like to do. <laughs> it's, nice to, it's nice to like get, get to, you know, get to, be able to to do that and he's good he's a good trainer and he's good with people yeah. but um it might be it might be better for him to be able to train you so that all of that responsibility isn't on him absolutely good point we want this him to still great. have fun right yes <laughs> this is this is really great i'm excited about this yeah this is yet another way to bring people into ownership of the trees exactly village trees belong to everyone exactly um okay well, now oh what just as an aside have you been listening to npr they're encouraging you to follow trees i know they are and i just yeah. didn't start they said pick a tree and like take a picture of it or describe it once a month right. so this morning like how do you check on your tree this week how is your tree doing um you know but that's it's ryan lair <laughs> ryan lair um okay spring tree walk um Jocelyn, you know, we had a great turnout for the Florence Park winter one and Jocelyn thought it would be interesting to do Florence Park again in the late spring and see how the trees have come out and changed with the season. And because we got to see sort of the structure and so I, I thought that was a great idea. Um, Florence Park has a lot of interesting trees. And I don't know that we picked a date. Gail, did we pick a date? You I mean, don't recall, Ellen. Did we put no, that? I don't recall yeah. a day. No. Okay. I'll double check. Do you want me to pull the calendar up? Yeah. Okay. Although we may not have gotten to the point of putting it on the calendar. We may have just talked about no, it. No, I mean, just to, if, if you want to try. Oh, and okay. Okay. I mean, I, I don't have a calendar, my own calendar in front of me. I am remarkably available these days. Mm -hmm. you want to, are you going to think April or May? Um, I think May things will really be leafed out. Yeah, early May would probably be a good choice. Mm -hmm. some, some trees like sugar maples are a little later. We wouldn't really see that, which could also be interesting. But oaks are late. Oaks you know, are late. Early May, when you get that like baby, that light baby green color and the yeah. leaves are soft, that would yeah. be a nice time. So not Mother's Day. No. <laughs> yeah, we did I was just looking at the notes. There wasn't a date assigned. Okay. Yeah. What you. about the eighth? Anything down for that? That's mother, I think that's Mother's Day. No, oh. isn't it the second? It's the second one, isn't it? Oh, this, maybe you're right. It is the, the second. Is yeah, the eighth would be the second. What about May one? May day. May day. Mm. Oh, what a perfect activity for May day. <laughs> right? It makes me think of the maypoles, like the trees of the maypoles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, very. That was Did anybody great. else do that when you were in elementary school, dance yes. around the maypole? We yeah. had one every year, but we moved away before I was in sixth grade, and I never got oh. to do it. <laughs> we did that in Brooklyn on our asphalt, you know, on our blacktop uh -huh. yeah. play area in the back. We had yeah. a maypole. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So is that a yes on the May 1st? Do we try May 1st? Is it, That's a Sunday, 1 o'clock. Yeah, we, I, 
Are you going to be able, could you talk to Jocelyn or do you want me to go? Yeah. Um, I'll talk to Jocelyn. Are there any other, um, I don't want to be in conflict with any other events. Is May 8th is Mother's Day. Yeah. So that's mm -hmm. probably not good. And May 14th and or 15th is a potential um, concert in the park that the rec department and the historical society are doing, but it's not confirmed. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, Justin likes to do them on Sundays. Yeah, Sunday afternoons. Yeah, in the what park. A, um, Sunday afternoons in the park with Jocelyn. <laughs> Not with George. Day is Monday, May thirtieth, and I it's observed. It's I think it's both observed and the national. You know, it's I mean it is Memorial Day actually. actually Memorial Day. <laughs> Memorial Day this year. Yeah. So that weekend's probably not good. So for May, probably the best week, probably the best date is the first. Yeah. Or the 22nd. Let's okay. make that the rain date then. Okay. Providing it's good for Jocelyn, right? Yeah, providing Jocelyn is okay with that. I'm texting her right now. Okay. Um. Okay, okay, now the next item here is um, what we were talking about earlier, which is, I, I want <laughs> we've already talked about this. I, I wanted, I, I do want to build a file with images of trees that have been killed or really badly damaged by the Con Ed pruning. Um, so we've already talked about it. Matt had talked a little bit about pruning last Some time. other pruning, right? Hmm? It's not all Con Ed though. The trees, some of the things you've shown have been. Yeah, but I was specifically talking about the Con Ed ones that we know about. You want me to show photos now? More trees? We already, we already looked at it, I think. Okay. It was the counseling center, the Stanley Avenue. Yes, we looked yeah. at that. Yeah, and I'm going to go dig out one from a few months ago and then start. Marlene, you're really good at this. If you see any more trees that Con Ed is really. You know, that are clearly struggling because it takes a couple of years, not if they cut all the limbs off, but it, you know, a lot of times they do those horrible, just yeah. Off. Well, Jerry had to take down a tree on Prospect for that reason Was because Con Ed had just basically right. made the tree really, really beyond repair. Yeah, okay, Prospect. Yeah, he, he said that, that it was so damaged by Con Ed that it had to go. That was in that was on in our file a few times. Thank yep. you. I forgot about that. Prospect, yep. It was last fall, wasn't it? I believe it was, yep. Um I don't even know what season we're in. Um okay, now something okay, new business. I, I, this was in yellow, budget request to the Board of Trustees for pruning mature trees, um, requesting $60,000 budget. And Marlene, you were doing a very good financial response and said, could we sort of explain what that's for? <laughs> but I didn't, I had it in yellow because I didn't know if I was gonna have the information, but I did get it from Jerry yesterday. And I sent you, if you saw earlier today, how I would propose doing it. Um, $60,000, he says that to do maintenance pruning, this isn't to go in and cut off one limb that's been broken or something like that. This is to really go in and, and you know, remove the dead wood and shape the tree or, um, you know, real, real just structural work. Anyway, he said that that would cost depending to between 600 and 900 dollars a tree which meant that if we had sixty thousand dollars we could do about 67 to 100 trees a year now based on what I just told you about how many trees we have when we actually try to count them that's only a small number of our trees but it would be a really good start and um, so I've drafted a proposal uh, to request this from Board of Trustees um, you know, I give that explanation number based on village manager's estimate that maintenance pruning for health and structure safety and to lift the canopy 
costs about 600 to 900 per tree. And then I explain health and structure would remove dead or damaged branches that make a tree more susceptible to disease. It would remove branches growing in an awkward position. It would lighten the canopy so a tree would offer less wind resistance during storms. And safety consideration would improve by removing dead branches that might drop on pedestrians. While this is extremely rare, you're more likely to get hit by lightning, but I didn't put that in. Um, it is a concern, and I've had this happen, often cited by residents as a reason they don't like having trees around them. It makes them nervous. So, you know, we could take out the dead branches. And then lifting the canopy is something I've become really aware of just doing our citizen pruning work. I used to be really indignant because people would break off branches or, you know, prune, just cut them off. In a, in a way that was not correct. And once I actually started paying attention to it, I realized they're doing it because either the trees are obstructing line of sight or they're blocking the sidewalk or they're blocking the, the road and so lifting the canopy would put them up above all of that. And you know we can do it with the little ones, but I can't reach some of those branches. So you know that would be another object for this. Um, and, and and we're not supposed to be on ladders when we're doing these activities. I know, I know, I know. I, I'm usually not on a ladder, mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, I never allowed. And the, pro the proposal is to the board of trustees. Yeah, they're starting to work on the budget now. Isn't that right, Nora? Yes. Okay. So if we approve this tonight, I could just send it over. How would I, what's the procedure? Uh, well, we have our first, we're having a pre-budget meeting, you know, that before the budget's actually, I mean, you know, staff's been working on, it's, it's a, it's a big process, but we're yeah, meeting on the, before our meeting on the 28th to talk about the budget. So um, that would be something to, you know, it's sort of like, you know, okay. Sort of ballpark issues of, you know, what's important in the budget this yeah. year, you know, conceptual issues. So if you send that, um, I can make sure it's part of the backup for that part of the meeting. Send Thank it, you. you know, if you're gonna send it, send it um, to, send it to um, Jerry and, okay. and Dan and Augie and Sally. And you can copy the mayor and board, but it's, you know, it's, they are, they put the agenda together, so. Is Augie the clerk treasurer? Yes. Okay. Because I, I don't think his email comes up as Augie. I know it's A Fusco. Okay. Yep. Um, and then CC the board. Sure. CC mayor and board. Thank you. Okay, so do you, I, I did send it to you. I don't know if you've had a chance to read it. I read it to you, sort of. Mm -hmm. Can we vote on it and approve to send it and get it into there? process or I make a motion wait for Marlene do you have any more objections to it <laughs> I just was wondering I mean these are only going to be mature trees that are going to be pruned right yes. so how many mature trees do we really have thousands okay thousands okay. what I want to do and I say this at the bottom actually is that I would anticipate that like the first couple years we would probably go around to um you know, trees that obviously need immediate work, mm -hmm. but that and I, what I'd like to do, the, the goal is to be able to divide the village into zones and, you know, then as on a rotating schedule, just go through yeah. and so, work with the trees, but there's a catch up period. This is kind of like um, a maintenance schedule for paving roads. Uh, like, you know, there's like, yeah, we, you're right. we have to do it periodically. Right systematic about it and so um you know we're planting trees they are a resource mm -hmm. if we are if we do a better job of maintaining them we may yeah, have, longer. i mean you know it's like preventative health yeah you know we don't we may be in a situation where we have fewer of them come down in trees because you know in storms because they're properly pruned i mean right. you know i, I know should add that yeah sometimes trees like I know that when we lost all those trees in Harbor Island during Sandy, they went down on the opposite direction of where the wind usually came. So trees get used to wind in one direction, mm -hmm. the prevailing wind. And so 
a wind in the other direction and a very, very strong wind with, you know, which had, you know, the roots were all in muddy ground by that point. So who knows whether, but who knows whether they would have survived better if the canopy had been thinned better. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, it may be an expense that actually pays off. Yeah. yeah. And that's probably worth. Um, I, I'm going to add that. Yeah. I'm going to add that. Doing a little research on too. We should. We should. We should look for that. Okay. Um. Okay. Now, okay, you know, it, they're really it. It's there are thousands of trees, tree trees, tree trees alone. Not even getting into the parks. We make a motion. Yes, motion. I make a motion to approve this. Second. I approve this message. I approve this idea. Anyone second? Ellen seconds. Okay. And, and all in favor? Aye. Aye, aye, aye. Okay. I just got a text from Jocelyn. She says that we had talked about May 15 mm. with May 22 as a backup. 15th is apparently a possible conflict. There, okay. There's a possible conflict on May 14th with the rain date of May 15th. It's a concert. I don't know what the timing of it is. Do you want me to check the, the concert time? Yeah, check the time because it could be that. They're usually in the evening, aren't they, Nora? I think this is going to be an afternoon one, though. Oh, okay. 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 I'll find out from her if she could do May 1. Yeah. Um. Okay. Uh, bah, bah, bah. Where am I? Oh, I'm up here. Can I prove budget request? Okay, that was re sorry, I couldn't follow my agenda. Um okay, Matt's not here. He had sent an email around um he's interested in working up you know the financial benefits that come to people for planting trees this can be another another avenue that we would like people to understand better is energy savings and other things so he was i think particularly talking about energy savings um committee for the environment here this is attachment nine i don't know if you're still trying to do attachments or not um, the Committee for the Environment is doing a pollinator project, and that has led to an interest among them of um, planting trees along the waterways. And they're, they're applying for a grant to get, to get free trees to do that, and they wanted to know if we would like to participate in that. It'll probably be both a, a village staff and volunteer effort to get all these trees planted. My concern is that I don't know which which waterways are possibly going to be disrupted when they start the flood mitigation because I don't see any point in planting trees that will just get dug up again. But there, I know there are some that will not be affected. So I actually had asked Jerry if he had a list or could get a list of the tree, the, you know, like Beaver, Beaver Creek is not, I'm sure, going to be part of the mitigation. So places like that would, or parts of Guyan Creek, you know, places that would really benefit from having trees, both for flooding and also for um, erosion, and at the same time could be part of the pollinator pathways, you know, plant certain kinds of oaks are great for pollinators, so. I'm wondering if Otter Creek uh, ever applied for this because they seem to be on top of a lot of, you know, restoration. Yeah, they're doing, a, they have a big restoration project. I think mm -hmm. they've actually already done it. Um, I don't, and that was like five years ago, hmm. but I would imagine they're still doing it. It's because they're great to get trees for Guyan Creek. That would be a wonderful place yeah. to do it. 
yeah. Um, anyway, so, you know, I, I thought we would be interested in doing that. I don't think it's something we have to vote on, but, you know, you all generally agree that this would be worthwhile. We would have to watch out for Poison Ivy Gale <laughs> in doing this. Yeah. One, one of the native plants that flourishes on our waterways. Right. Yes, indeed. But um, anyway. Uh, it, I, yes. I have the information. Okay. The timing of the, the of the possible concert is three to four thirty. Yeah, well, I think we should do it another day. And I just got a text from Jocelyn that May one would also be okay with May twenty two as a rain date. Okay, let's do that. I hope May one works because I think that would be a really pretty time for the trees. I'm going to check the farmer's almanac. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure we have it this year, but I will look for it. Jocelyn is loving doing these walks. Does she? That's good. I'm so glad. Yeah. yeah. I mean, people follow her to the car. She, you know, she really literally has to get in her car and drive away in order to, to end the session. Well, and if I mean. we need to get two naturalists, I like the idea of not limiting registration. Just, yeah. you know, come. Yeah. yeah. It'd be great. Um, were you saying something, Nora? No, I think it's great that. Yeah, there's a lot of enthusiasm. There are quite a few repeat people now who really look forward to it. And, and of course, there are always some new ones, but. Um, and, and then during the pandemic, it's a really great outdoor thing to do. So yeah, but it's also it's good for the tree committee's mission. Yeah, it it, it really is. It really is. Okay, should I close um, this attachment? Yeah, you can close that one. Okay. I just have a quick question about that. Okay. So as far as this proposal um, for the grant, is there anything we need to do? I don't think so. I think they're doing it. Um, okay. I would just tell her that we are very interested in working with them and to let us know what the next steps are. Okay, thanks. I wonder if Jocelyn, if somehow we could call on her expertise, if she would have any suggestions because she's been to a lot of spaces. I'm Is wondering it, if by um, Warren Park, they, you know, by the waterway there. Yeah. If they could use some trees, because they sure have lost a lot of trees. They did. I've actually got five going in in this spring planting that we're doing. Mm -hmm. uh, they did lose a lot. They, it, it's worth looking at it. Um, but um, um, yeah, they, since they, you've been corresponding with Ellen, do you want to mention that? Like Warren Park is a possible site and because that also floods terribly. Yeah, they had Warren Park. Be nice to have some willows there and uh-huh. Yeah. There's you know, some there's a there are there's something called a chestnut oak. I was looking up some of the trees that did well in this area and mm -hmm. something called a chestnut oak that apparently is fabulous. Um, mm -hmm. Under those circumstances, and is also, of course, as we know, oaks are great pollinator trees. So, um, and oaks are getting hit very badly, and they anticipated to get worse because of climate change. Um, that's what they were talking about in today's urban forestry management mm -hmm. webinar. Really. And to really start planting now, <clears throat> you know, um, they said that like an area in Connecticut, I guess around Yale, has the same rise in temperature as a place in, I think it was Tennessee, the yeah. same temperature. It's temperature is now, this, it's zone is essentially the same. Yeah, yeah. Well, the oaks, the thing, you know, I, we were, Sarah and I worried a lot about that when we were first starting to pick species and plant them. And we, for, that's why we started doing swamp white oaks instead of white oaks. But the oaks, they have such a wide range. I, I don't, didn't, as you know, I missed most of that talk. I'll listen to it. But 
they have a pretty southerly range. And I'm actually thinking to go to plain old white oaks because I think, uh, well, I mean, it varies. Well, the, his point yeah. today was that it's as if we were more southerly now, this area, it's yeah, warming well, up it, a lot. Although we do get these very cold spells in the winter. We do, but I mean, but I mean, I'm surprised about the oaks because I've checked their range and they go very far south. Yeah, yeah. Well, you'll, you'll watch the webinar. I but... will, I will. Yeah. I mean, I, there are other things that worry me about oaks more than the temperature has actually, given what I've learned about them. But I will watch it and I'm very interested in it. The webinar she's referring to, one that Gail discovered, um, I think she sent the link around. It's Yale School of Forestry. It's a series of talks on, is it on urban forestry? I've forgotten, or just- Urban forestry management. It's exactly what we are doing. The management plan we've written in urban forest is defined. It's, it's not what you might think of as forest. It could be, yeah. it can include street trees. It includes trees yeah. in backyards of homes. Yeah. It includes um, undisturbed little forested areas like like off of Fenimore there's that strip that park oh, uh, between well adjacent to I-95 just whatever little spaces little pockets there are like that that all of it is considered an urban forest. Well this is one of the arguments there were some people who didn't know why the tree law when we were still drafting it was not just written to prevent clear cutting. But, you know, the reality is that there are not that many places in the village of Ameriknek or anywhere, you know, anywhere that's in a metropolitan area um, that have large enough lots that clear cutting is really an issue. And so the tree in my backyard and the tree in the backyard next door are working together to create more of a forested area. Or this person that Nora just talked to who lives on Washington Street, who would love to have a tree in the backyard. And that's the start of the urban forest in, in Washingtonville. Right. And another important thing about the tree law, when you trees communicate and support each other through underground networks, the my, mycelial, you know, fu the fungal network that surrounds the roots. And actually, when, when a tree, let's say a tree is, you know, all of the branches are cut off and you with, assume it's going to die, surrounding trees will lend it sugar so that it can grow new branches and new leaves, oh. <laughs> which is incredible. And I remember that happening on the Maranek Avenue many years ago, pretty soon after we moved here, where well, there used to be uh, pin oaks, I think, Nora, do you remember? Were they pin oaks? Yeah. Pin oaks, yeah. They're pin oaks and they all got lobbed off for the new landscape idea. They're all going to be cut down. But before, you know, after they cut off all the branches, all the crowns, and before they removed the trunks, the trees grew new branches. I thought it was just like, mm -hmm. talk about resiliency. Where it was, was like a miracle to me all along the Mernick Avenue. So they store sugar and the mycelial networks will like, you know, transport the sugar from other trees from other areas. And it's not just those trees, those, those networks go very, very far, very far. So it's quite amazing. Great book by Merlin Sheldrake. I, I've got it, it's come into the bookstore. I'm gonna pick it up tomorrow. Yeah, not, not to be confused with his father, Rupert, Merlin Sheldrake. <laughs> Who is a real nut. <laughs> He's a scientist. He sounds British. Yeah, very. Cambridge. Yeah. Great book. Very readable, too. Yeah, and I will report back to you. <laughs> um, should I open attachment 10? Yes, tree tags. Okay. This is something we saw last week at this um, Yale School of Forestry program. And Kale and I texted each other immediately because this is what we would like to put on our new trees. Um, a tag front and then the next one shows you the back. Now you can, I mean, this is a really fancy one. You use the QR code apparently and go into iTree mm -hmm. and get all the information about the tree. You don't have to do that. You can just put the information on the tag. 
we don't have the technological resources to do a QR code. Or the budget. I think that's what we need to do. I think we really need to just say, you know, like, hi, I'm your new tree. Glad, you know, so nice to meet you. And, you know, if you water me, et cetera, you, you know, okay. just a few Here's suggestions. The Here's the thing. Um, would anyone like to take this on as a project? It would involve, I give out the species for the new trees. Um, I'll do it, Bev. Will you do I'll it? Do it. I'll do it. Thank you. You know, Gail, maybe the nurseries even have something like this. Some of the nurseries might. They might, but I, I want it to be something from the village of Amerineck. I want it, yeah, I, you know, I'll draw on my graphic design career. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> yeah. career. Yeah. It'll look nice. Yeah, it should look nice. It should look friendly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great. And how are these attached, by the way? Are they... I imagine they go around a branch. No, I didn't take a picture of that. They were loosely. You could see here it's loose. They were around yeah. a branch. But Eventually, in a couple of years, someone's going to have to take it off. Okay, that's absolutely. Cool. And there would be, I, you know, there should be like a spreadsheet of where they are, so that we could revisit those areas and remove them. And would okay. you put them only on new trees, or would you try to put them on other trees too? The idea right now is to put them on new trees. Um, it would be nice if they were a recyclable material. It would be. Uh, I'm I'm very open to suggestions. Well, on I, that. I mean, there, if they, I mean, we have a fairly limited list of species that we use for crystal trees, and so we yeah. have year after year. So it's not necessarily recyclable, unless by that you meant just reusable. Either way, yeah. Either way, yeah. Do you mean compostable or reusable? I, I'm thinking reusable. You know, mm -hmm. I, I like reusable because compostable, it may not last to, you know. Yeah. yeah. I think if you use something that, that will degrade naturally, then it will degrade while it's on the tree. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So reusable because- Yeah, yeah reusable. And then we'll probably be planting the same species again and fairly soon. And so it can just move when it gets- when it outgrows its tree, or when its tree outgrows it, rather, um, yep. move to the next generation. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Gail. It's a great idea. Thank you for Welcome. doing it. You're welcome. Okay. It's a great idea. Um, trees for our uh, 12 was, I guess that's from you, Marlene. Um, Trees for America brochure Arbor Day Foundation. Oh yeah, I had said at the last meeting that I was gonna look up what's available online. Yeah. Um, I wasn't all that impressed with what I found, oh, okay. um, but I just forwarded some of the things that I came across. Okay. Uh, yeah, well, so that was- it raised the interesting question. Arbor Day is April 29, which is right before our tree walk, come to think yes. of it. Yes, yes. Um, I know that there's sort of been half-hearted efforts to do Arbor Day observations. I've never actually been to one in the past, but I wondered, is there anything planned for Arbor Day, Nora, on the calendar? I don't, not on the calendar, I'm just looking. When is Arbor Day this year? April, it's Friday, April 29. But that doesn't mean nothing, is that, I, that's likely to be- Clean green thing? Yeah. But it's not. We should check with um, the committee for the environment. Okay. Uh, because I don't. It's nothing's on the calendar yet. But that doesn't mean they're in, not. In the past, we have planted a tree for Arbor Tree for mm -hmm. Arbor Day during the Clean and Green Day. Mm -hmm. uh, the vil there was sort of like a ceremony of planting a new tree, and maybe we could mm -hmm. just make that part of every Clean and Green Day. That we have, but is it? Uh, here's my question: Because when I do clean and green day, I want to go out and pick up litter. I don't want to hang around for ceremony. But we have because what's happened the past. The I mean, nothing in nothing in 2020. But what's happened is that we um, there's a lot going on in the park in the morning when people are meeting. Yeah. Get their packages so there are a bunch of groups a bunch of village committees like one one day we had the comp plan people there and uh, um gail has organized tree plan you know like acorn planting um and kind of gives out trees so it's kind of an it's kind of a nice day because everybody's thinking about the environment 
Mm -hmm. Okay, so could we do it? Okay. But if we all took turns, you know, if we're there for three hours, if people take turns, then there's enough time to clean up as well. Yeah. I would be happy to man the booth. I, I've done that before. Okay. Yeah, last year when we did it, there was somebody a couple, a couple of tables away that had plantings they were giving out. Yeah, I remember so, that. You and Wendy so, were there. Yeah, so the, I think they got a little confused because they were expecting us to have something already planted where we were just giving out the cups and the seeds. Mm. Yeah, and telling them how to do it. Yeah. I mean, the little saplings from Connet are great because it's just pretty foolproof. Yeah. Okay, uh, so I'm gonna be in touch with Ellen Silver anyway, um, her committee from the environment. So why don't I ask her okay. about the date and whether Arbor Day could be And if we're gonna get donations from Con Ed, our yeah. enemy. <laughs> I know, I know. I know. <laughs> our arch nemesis. Yep. Well. We do like the electricity. We do yeah. like electricity. If they would just do it in a way that didn't destroy everything else. Um, okay, I will ask her about that. I'm sorry, uh, what are you gonna ask Ellen? Ellen Silver, um, Committee for the Environment, CFTE. Right. Um, yeah. About the date for cleaning Green Day. Okay. And whether if it is like on, I guess Friday on Saturday, April 30th would be the day. If okay. um, that's a big, big weekend for nature because we're having our tree walk the next day. Mm -hmm. um, um, is that a good thing? Will we get enough people at each event if we do that? Or is it duplicating, you know, like- I don't know. I don't, know. I, I don't think it's a problem because I think um, the tree walk tends to attract more mature people than the clean green day. Just families a lot. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. Well, and the clean, sounds reasonable. The clean green day is usually in April. It's closer to Earth Day usually. Yeah. So you know, it's not on the calendar, but it's closer to Earth Day, and Earth Day is the twenty second, right? Always. Yeah. 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 So it's a week a week apart. No. If we're doing well, the twenty second yeah. is actually like Friday or Saturday, so if they did it that week, um, it's a little over a week from May first to April twenty second. Yeah, nine days. Yeah. Um, I don't know what to do. I'll ask her first of all for the date for that. April twenty second is a Friday. Yeah. And then, uh, but probably cleaning green will be the twenty third. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Twenty third. So it's the weekend before. It's the weekend before. I don't think that's you know. I mean, I think the cleaning green attracts a lot of kids who are looking for service hours. And you families know, looking for something to do. Um. I don't think that's terrible. I mean, I think people are really looking to get out of the house for a couple of hours. Yeah. But I think it's fine. It. Sounds good. I think it's fine. I'm convinced. I'm convinced. Okay. But now to do an Arbor Day thing, should we try still try to get that in if she's doing it on the 23rd? Is that when we- I think it should be combined. I think they're so similar. Yeah. I agree. Okay. I'm confused. I'm confused. What are we combining? Arbor Day. Arbor Day idea with the but, yeah, Green, Green Day. Day. Okay, thank Ar you. Arbor Day observed, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Yeah, I think that doing Clean and Green on the 23rd and a tree walk on May 1st and Arbor Day on April 30th might be too much, but... <laughs> Okay, next up, Marlene sent us a uh, clear and 
some clear and concise, a link to something giving clear and concise points about the importance of trees. I thought that was really good because it, it distills, you know, we, we read all these articles and we throw them around at the meetings and we're all yeah. kind of living it, but this really distilled it into something that someone else might be willing to read. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that was a decent one. Yeah, that was a good link. Um, and then this book that Gail has been talking about, um, about the mycelia, mycelia that are communicate, letting trees talk to each other. She has proposed that as another author talk or just book discussion? Uh, both. Okay, can you get hold of the author? Did you get a response? You got a response from the library. Yeah, um, I'm so tired right now. I don't remember if I heard back from Robert. Um, Linda is thinks it's great, and she wanted it to wanted me to run it by uh, Robert. And I I don't remember if I got a response. I'm sorry. Let me just. Oh, I can't look on my cell phone. I don't want to look it's right okay. now. Just try to remember to do it at some point. You know, I haven't even set a date on. I, I reached out to Robert. I'm not sure if I I heard. Did reach out to him. I didn't know whether he reached back. Yeah, I'll, I'll make a note to look into that. Yeah. And this, this is that Merlin Shel Sheldrake? Sheldrake yeah. book. Yeah. You know, hang on one sec, I'll get the book, I'll show it to you. And, and the reason I was looking up that information was in case we decide to do a campaign, right? With, mm -hmm. yeah. with the tree, yeah. So Robert might wanna, that thing Thank that you, you and I liked, maybe Robert would be interested in seeing it. This is the book, Enchanted, yeah. Entangled, sorry, Entangled Life. Fungi. How <laughs> fungi make our worlds, change our minds, and shape our futures. It's very readable, wonderful, eye-opening book. And is it, hmm. is it scientifically Yes, yes. Okay, because I started... I, I, I couldn't believe his name was really Merlin Sheldrake. So I Googled him and <laughs> I got it all mixed up with his father. His father was apparently a hippie of sorts. His father was a hippie. <laughs> and, and, and science, was publishing all these pseudo-scientific things and I thought they were the same person, but apparently Merlin Sheldrake, who is um, Cambridge educated and um, I can't remember, mycelium expert. Right, my, writes um, about mycelial networks, writes about a lot about fungi, but the part, you know, the, the mycelial networks is incredible. Anyway, but as long as he's yeah. reputable, that's okay. It's reputable. We're going to be there. His father wrote about magic mushrooms, so. <laughs> well, those he are kind of that too, but he yeah. has a, a very good review by Elizabeth Colbert. He's passionate, deeply knowledgeable, and a wonderful writer. Good. Um, Betsy Colbert is an MHS graduate. Really? Yes. New York Times reporter. Yeah. Her, her mom is Marlene Colbert. And Good my father-in-law babysat for Marlene Colbert. Your father-in-law babysat for Marlene? Okay. Yes. <laughs> He's not alive anymore, but he babysat yes. for her. Okay. They're close friends of the family. Anyway, I'm looking forward to the book. I'm looking forward to the book. Yeah. Um, and so we'll, we'll, I mean, nothing's been scheduled yet, but I think it's a great idea. Thank you for coming up with it. Um, next okay. meeting, if we can possibly meet before March 16th, we can do it online. Is it, today's only the 17th, so that would be four weeks from now. Can we manage that, Nora? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, and the, just so you know, the executive order was, ex was extended March, March 16th. 16th. So we'll, we may be meeting together the following, I guess it's the following week, right? Wait, when was it extended to? I thought it was extended to the 16th. March 16th. Yeah. So if we could meet like 15th or 16th, I'd be really happy. <laughs> Me too. Let's do the 16th. Well, let's see if we can. I mean, it depends. The Wednesday. Wednesdays, I have to say, Wednesdays are very difficult for me. I'm wiped out because I work until 6.30 on Wednesdays. Tuesdays? Tuesday I works. I can't, see, I can't.
do Tuesday. I could do a Monday. Um, Nora has BOT. I can't do Monday the 15th. I have a board of trustees meeting. So we do March 11. Um, I thought next week. <laughs> Tomorrow. Is, March 11th is a Friday. Oh, sorry. March 10th. 10. Um, maybe. Um, did we say no to the 15th? Um, somebody. I can't, do, I can't host Tuesday the 15th. I have another yeah. meeting. Okay. Um, and you only need me for Zoom. I'm not crazy about doing it on a Friday night, honestly. I, I, we should not do it on a Friday night, no. Yeah. Because no, no member of the public is going to want to watch on a Friday night. Yeah. Yes, course, Wednesday is a problem for me, Marlene. I'm really fried Wednesdays when I, I get home late. Um, well, there's Thursday. That, so we usually meet, on, our, we're scheduled to meet on Thursday the 24th. It's too late. It's too late in the month. So we can't do it on Zoom, right? We well, can if we do it before the 16th. It may get extended, but the Zoom, but the ex, the extension of the ability to meet on Zoom was extended till May, till March the 16th at midnight. And then, so it may not be extended on the 17th. If we meet on the 17th or we meet a schedule on the 24th, we won't, and we probably won't know. Um, we may not know until March 16th because it was announced the day, it, it was announced this week, the day it was to expire. Yeah. So that's why I would like to try and get it in the previous prior week if that would work. Can we do March 10, Nora? I maybe. I mean, I'll try. I okay, try for March 10. I think probably yes. Can I just ask one question? Yes. Uh -huh. I, um, the Trees for American brochure mm -hmm. and the importance of trees link. Is that the same information? No, yeah, you could put them together, I think. Oh. I mean, they're two different things, but they were resources I was looking up for when we do our campaign promoting trees, like when we introduce the tree law and um the idea was to have some some information that that, yeah yeah so you know robert's probably remember, going to be doing it i guess i remember seeing what um when i when i looked at the attachments i saw something that explained the importance of trees so that yeah that was that was the link so right. the trees for american brochure is just the concept uh that was another resource for the same oh idea. okay it was that's a resource a, okay okay thanks sure okay that's it okay okay so um, meeting. <laughs> do we, we want to try and get reschedule it for um march 10 march 10. Let me just double, I'm just looking, we've scheduled a bunch of budget meetings, so just let me. Look at those. I'm pretty sure there's nothing on the 10th, but I want to double check. Yeah, that's fine. There's no budget. Awesome. So let's, should we send a note to Sally? And yes, yes, grab the 10th. Are you going to do yeah, that note to Sally, her. Nora? We're not looking for a space. No, we're just looking for. Yeah bandwidth. Nora, are you going to contact Sally or do you no, want us right to do now. it? Right okay, now. thank you. We'll get in ahead of all those other committees that are trained. Well, it doesn't matter because we don't need a room. Okay, okay. It's whether or not I have to host something else or I have another meeting. Oh. Okay. So March 10. Okay. Hopefully I'll have a tree tag to show you guys or design for one. Do you want me to send mm -hmm. you some species? Um, it'll be a generic one, but you could send me something. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Do you like a village logo? I'm not sure who has that, but. The website probably has it now. 
Maybe. I mean, they, you, there might be a, a better image of it. Right. I'm going to ask, okay. you know what? I'm going to put that in the email too today. Cause okay. Good. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Do I need to find a printer? I don't know. We might be able there. Maybe they can do it. I don't know. I, I don't know. That's it has to be done on certain material. I've used, I don't know if Airborne on the post road does it, but they do really, really nice work. They do. get an estimate from them. Yeah. Find out what, what they would print it on and, you know, needs to be reusable. It had a, is it called a grommet, that metal yes. um, yeah. ring? Yeah, it had a grommet, which should be helpful. That way it doesn't, you know, can't get just pulled off. Yeah. I pruned more trees today. Took advantage of the All fit. right. Good yeah. for you. This wow, is the, Beth. everybody. If you want to get out there, this is the time. So. I injured my foot when my foot's better. If we have another day like today, I'll, I'll be out there. Or yeah. when we have another nice day. Yeah. I, I did some pruning last weekend when it was also in the low 50s. So, and then of course it goes down to the 30s and I don't want to go anywhere. <laughs> 20s. Okay, I think that is our meeting. Are we ready to adjourn? Motion. Okay. Thank Second. You. Thank you. All in favor? Bye. 913. 913. All right. Have a good Thank night, you. everybody. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Have a good weekend. Bye. Bye. You too.